the scripture and then uh, then we will sit down praise god all right let's read it together now on the first day of the unleavened bread when they killed the passover lamb his disciples said to him where do you want us to go and prepare that you may eat the passover and he sent out two of his disciples and said to them go into the city and a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water follow him wherever he goes in say to the master of the house the, te the teacher says where is the guest room in which i may eat the passover with my disciples then he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared there make ready for us so his disciples went out and came into the city and found it just as he had said to them and they prepared the passover amen you may be seated praise god well suresh help me here this thing has gone to the bottom uh, bring it up for me so i know what i am looking at praise god oh wait 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 i know praise god so today um, i want to talk about following instructions and um, i know naturally speaking many of us don't follow instructions when we when when uh, when our, ch uh, our children were small we will buy small stuff and uh, we, you know we have a feeling that we can put them together without reading the instructions and invariably sometimes you have to take them apart again because we did it wrong so we generally you know don't uh, read the instructions much less follow the instruction but it is important to follow the instructions of the lord Someone said uh, the Bible, B I B L E, uh, stands for basic instructions before leaving Earth. <laughs> Bible, so you got to have that instruction. You had to read it uh, to know it. Praise God. The other day, I was traveling to Cottage Grove to to visit a family and. Uh, as I was driving down the road, it said, uh, uh, the road is blocked. I have heard that in Minnesota there are only two seasons, right? Uh, <laughs> summer and construction, right? Summer, eh? Oh, winter. Oh, sorry, sorry. Winter and construction. <laughs> You've been in Minnesota more than I have been. All right, winter and construction. So, so, so all the construction work goes on uh, during the summer months. So I was driving the, down this road, and all of a sudden, they, they had this sign saying, road blocked, take a detour. But the sign was way to the side. So the road was completely open. So I thought maybe they have pushed it out, so now we can go. So I took that road and go down, went down a mile or two, and then it took me nowhere. It just, just ends right there. So we had to trace our way back and uh, find our way, take the detour. Read the story of a man who who's faced the same situation and he thought was he was very smart. So he came to a place where it said, uh, road closed, take a detour. But he was like me and he said, well, May not be it is not close. Maybe a mistake, and uh, maybe it is open. So he took the road, and his wife said, "Please don't take it. Please don't take it." But uh, he took it anyway, and the, and the farther they went, he felt more confident. You know, look, my decision was the right decision. If I had listened to you, we would be just running around, you know, in detours. So, so he, as he was going, he became more and more confident, and sort of somewhat proud in his in his ability to make decisions for himself. Lo and behold, he also ran into a place where the bridge was washed away by a heavy flood. So he had to turn around and, and then he was going back. And then going back to the original place, he took that turn. He saw a big sign saying, welcome back, stupid. Now you take the detour. <laughs> <laughs> we are like that. Sometimes we don't follow instructions. And uh, 
We just, we just think we can do it. How much more is it important that we listen to the word of God? We listen and take the instructions from the Lord. I like this passage because, uh, because um, this teaches us so many things in this, in this small portion of the scripture. Praise God. Now on the first day of the unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover lamb, he, the disciples said to him, where do you want us to go and prepare that you may eat the Passover? I want to comment on the disciples here a little bit. I liked their attitude. They knew the Passover meal was coming up, and they also knew that there was no arrangements made for that Passover meal. We know that the Lord did not have a, a place of his own, right? He did not have a place of his own. And so the disciples were following him wherever he went. So they are asking him, Lord, Passover is coming up. Where are we going to have the Passover meal? So I come in the, the forethought of the disciples that uh, we need to have a place. That encourages me to be thinking about the needs that lay ahead of us. What are the things that are coming up? What do we need to do for it? That's a good habit to have. Many of us, you know, wait for the last moment and then do something. And we get in a lot of trouble because of that. But if you think ahead of time, and then do it ahead of time, you get to relax, right? How many of you are like that? I, I've been like that so many times in my life. We think we have all the time in the world to do that, and we put it off and put it off, and lo and behold, we are at the threshold of it. And then we work hard and try hard, and, and we are confused, and, and our mind is not settled. It takes longer to do it. But imagine if we had done it two or three days earlier, we can relax and enjoy. I commend the forethought of the disciples here coming to the Lord and say, Lord, it is Passover time. Where do you want us to have the meal? I want us to be thinking people, thinking people, especially when it comes to, well, I would say both our secular life and our spiritual life. We need to be very much thinking. What is coming ahead? What do we need to do for it? How can I prepare for it? What is coming up? Praise God. For the camp, we prayed. Many people prayed. And I was so impressed to see our young people, the, the, the worship team, coming and gathering here to pray for uh, the camp after the Friday night service. And God met with us in a wonderful way. So we need to think ahead and plan ahead and, and do what is necessary that we will have a good outcome in the things that we are trying to do, whether it be in your secular life or in your spiritual life. Perhaps we are doing it in our secular life, but we need to do it in our spiritual life as well. Give some thought. Give some thought to Sunday morning. Give some thought to Friday evening. Give some thought to Saturday, first Saturday of the month, and prepare yourself. And then get ready. And God, you will see the Lord blessing you. So I commend the disciples, for they are bringing this up to the Lord. Where do you want us to go and prepare that you may eat Passover? And they said that you may eat Passover, that you may eat Passover. Later on, we will see the Lord is saying that I may eat my Passover with my disciples. Amen. And I like that too. The Lord is thinking about the disciples as well. And he said, sent out two of his disciples and said to them, go into the city and a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him. Wherever he goes in, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is the guest room which I may eat the Passover with my disciples? 
disciples, with my disciples. Then he will show you a large upper room. Look at the specificity of the statement of the Lord. He said he will show you a large upper room, large upper room, furnished and prepared. The Lord is very specific, isn't it? Very specific. It's like the, the mules that the Lord sent after. You know, you will find them tied. Go and find it. Go and find it. So the Lord is very specific in his directions. The word of God is very specific in his directions. Praise God. You can read it and understand it. Then he will show you. Okay, verse number 16. So his disciples went out and came into the city and found it just as he had said to them, and they prepared the Passover. Praise God. Before I go to my first slide here, I want to remind you, uh, Pastor Yohanan will be speaking next Friday night as well. Okay, he'll be here Friday and Sunday. Okay, so please come. He's a, he's a man of God working in North India for many, many years have established many churches and uh, leading those churches. And uh, please come and listen to him next Friday and Sunday. And I want to thank the visitors for uh, being here today. And this is Teja's mom, Teja. How many of you know Teja? And um, I have never seen her in a sari, so I didn't quite realize who it was. So um, we welcome her to our midst today. We pray for Teja that he will be totally well and uh, healed and ready to go. And it is so good to see Brother George and Bibi and the Luke. We've been missing you. Thank you so much for coming. And um, we have many families that travel to India, and they are back. All those families who travel to India recently, would you please stand so we can praise the Lord for your safe trip. Those families that travel to India, oh my goodness, look at that. Look at that. Amen. Praise God. God gave them a safe trip. We praise the Lord for each one of you. God bless you. You may be seated. And we are so glad that you are back and be here with us. Praise God. So the things that I was able to glean from this passage of Scripture is uh, four things I want to briefly mention. Number one, the faith of the disciples is exercised. The Lord is answering the question they put up, and the question was, where should we prepare the Passover meal? And the Lord is responding to that question, praise God. You know, it's a good thing that when we come to the Lord and um, have these questions in our heart, God is gracious enough to give us answers. Sometimes it may be through the Word of God, Sometimes it may be through the preaching that you may hear, like Gerald was saying, how he was blessed by hearing Pastor Felix's message. You know, sometimes it may be through circumstances that you go through, wow, this is what I needed to learn. So when we ask a question to the Lord, he, he has a way of giving us an answer. So he answers their question, but in answering that question, he wants to build up their faith. You know, he could have easily said, well, I know where we are going, so you just follow me and we will go there. But, but he, the Lord, wanted to build up their faith. He wanted to exercise their faith. And that's why so many times in our life, when we pray, we just don't see the answer when we open the door. He, he wants to exercise our faith. He wants to become us to become stronger and stronger in our faith in him. Praise God. So, so he gave them a, an instruction, and he said, now you go to the city, you go to the city, and there you will find a man carrying a pitcher of water. You follow him, and whichever home he enters, go to that house and ask the master of that house, where is the room? Where is the room? It is really somewhat humorous when I read this thing. It is, it, is, it is how the Lord is leading his disciples to learn 
that whatever the Lord says will come to pass. It is a, it is a lesson on faith. You do what I tell you and you will see the result of it. Praise God. So it is important for us to hear the instructions of the Lord and, and, and follow them as he has commanded us. You know, this, is, um, this instruction, for example, is, um, is somewhat uh, curious. You know, they might have said, but that's, that's kind of strange. We are going to the city and we'll see so many people there. And in a city there are so many homes and, and, and they could have doubted it. Would we find a man with a picture? But they believed the command of Christ. They decided to go. Praise God. You know, the Bible says, the Bible says that in Hebrews 11, 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Praise God. So, so the Lord is teaching them the lesson on faith. If you obey my command, then you will receive the reward of it. So just, just do what I tell you. Praise God. They must trust the words of Jesus to find the place. Believe in him. They must believe that they will find a man with a picture. They must believe that they will find the house. They must believe that they will find the master of the house. They must believe that there will be a room that is ready and prepared. So with that kind of attitude, faith, they set out to look for the place where they would have the Passover meal. Praise God. And number two, number two, we have another lesson here, and that is the obedience of the disciples is received, uh, revealed. So the Lord so told them what to do, and the next thing we know is the Bible says, so the disciples went out. The command was to go into the city. Now we see here the disciples went out. Went no arguing about it. No delay about it. Sometimes people delay in responding to God's word. Amen? Sometimes we'll delay, we wait, we, we debate whether we ought to do it or not. All the commands of God are to be obeyed when? Now. Now. Praise God. All the commands of God are to be obeyed now. We, we do not have the authority to say that I will do it later. That's not for us to do. So whenever the command of God is to us through the Bible, through the word of God, we ought to have a heart to say it is to be obeyed now. Now, don't put it off. Behold, today is the day of salvation. Today is the accepted time. Why should you wait for another day to do a good thing? Why should we wait for a different day to be obedient to the Lord? There's no need for that. All the commandments of God are to be obeyed when? Now. Now. So are you, are you in obedience to the commands of Christ? Whatever it is, you may be dealing, he may be dealing with you. I ask you to obey him. And there is a great joy in obeying the, the message of Christ, the words of Christ, the directions of Christ. Obedience of faith. So the disciples went out. In Hebrews 11 and 8, we read, by faith Abraham did what? Obeyed. By faith Abraham obeyed, and when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance, and he went out. I like that. Like, just like the disciples went out, Abraham went out because he was in obedience to the command of God. He went out not knowing where he was going. And that is, seems like to me is more, it took more faith, right? More faith to Abraham because he had no clue where he was going. But his disciples knew they were going to the nearest city to, to find the place. Praise God. So God deals with different people in different ways. Amen. He may not heal your sickness like he healed somebody else's sickness. He may not provide for you like he provided for somebody else. 
God deals with different people different ways. That's how he works. Praise God. To some people, he just touched and healed them. To some people who said, now you go and show yourself to the priest. To some, he said, now you go and wash yourself in, in the pool of Siloam. So God deals with people differently, and we must be open to that. Remember how Naaman was. He thought, he thought the prophet will come and put his hand on him and, and just heal him. That was his assumption, but he was proved wrong. God deals with you differently than he deals with me. So open, be open to the Lord. So by faith, Abraham obeyed. So obedience and faith, praise God. Though the direc direction seemed to be a little strange, they obeyed. They will find many people in the city, but follow the one with the pitcher of water. No, don't follow anybody else. Don't follow somebody who looks rich. Oh, he may have a bigger mansion in the city. Don't look like who looks too, so impressive. Don't do that. Follow the man the Lord told you to follow. Praise God. There are many houses in the city, but he must enter the house where the man goes in. Very specific command. So, number one, their faith was exercised. They, they were allowed to use their faith faith and developing that faith stronger. Number two, we see here how they obeyed the command of Christ, and that is the obedience of faith. Number three, praise God, the master's question. There was a question asked. The question asked is, where is the guest room? Where is the guest room? Praise God. Amen. You know, God asks us questions. Did you, did you know that? In the Bible, God asked so many questions to so many different people, so many questions, and he expects an answer. Praise God. Remember, he asked the question, where are you? Where are you? Who, to whom it was asked? Huh? To Adam. Where are you? Praise God. And then he asked, what have you done? To whom did he ask that question? Huh? Eve, what is this thing that you have done? You know, Adam said, well, this is the, this is the woman. <laughs> this is a woman's fault, you know. And the Lord said, what have you done? Praise God. What is in your hand? Moses, what is in your hand? Praise God. So many questions were asked by the Lord. And here the Lord is asking the question through the disciples, where is the guest room? Wonder what the question might be that God is asking you. Praise God. Having believed, have you been baptized? Having believed, are you faithful? Where are you? Where are you? God is asking. Praise God. So where is the guest room? Praise God. So I mean, I like the question that uh, the Jesus asked Peter. He said, do you love me? Do you love me? So many questions are asked in the Bible. I don't have time to go through all of them. Praise God. But he's asking questions for a response from us. He's asking you, my dear brother and sister, in your life, He's asking you, where are you being? Where are you, what are you doing with your money? I don't need your money. But what are you doing with your money? How are you spending your time? How are you raising your children? I am finding out it's hard to raise children, isn't it? With Zachary being at home for a month or so, Takes diligence. Take diligence. I encourage all the young parents to cry before God. Lord, give me grace. Give me strength. I need to raise these children in the ways of the Lord. Making them doctors and lawyers and science engineers and scientists, they're all good. But they are, all, they are nothing if they are lost. That's another question the Lord asks. Huh? What shall a man gain if he gain the whole world 
and lose his own soul. So please, raise them up. Say no to them. It's hard to say no to them. <laughs> it's hard to say no to them. You will see their frowns, their sad looks, their angry faces. Say, you know, after two or three times, they will learn. You know, children are the best to understand the limits they have. If they know the limits, they will stay there. If they think they can extend it, they will try their best. So be firm. Like they say, be fair, but firm. Praise God. What is, God is asking the question, what are you doing with your children? Are you giving them good training? You take them to church? Pastor, don't talk about church, right? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> are you taking them to the camp in the summer? Okay, that's good. God is asking questions. The master is asking, where is the guest room? Praise God. I wonder what question he is asking you today. Number four. Obedience of faith is rewarded. It's always true. Always true. And they found it just as he had said to them. Just as he had said to them. No variation whatsoever. It is in the upper room. It is a large room. It is furnished. It is prepared. Praise God. I was wondering about the master of the house. What made him to do all that? I believe the Lord put it in his heart. You go and make the room ready. You do it. Somehow he got an urge in his spirit. You know that room I have up upstairs, the large room? I don't know, I have a feeling today I got to go and get it fixed up. And he goes up there and cleans it up. His wife is, what are you doing? Are we having a meeting or something? No, no, no. Why are you doing it? I don't know, I just want to do it. I want to just have this room ready. Sometimes God puts a thought in our heart, in our spirit. And we must follow through on that. We must say, Lord, I will do it. I will do it. Praise God. When the Holy Spirit is working in a meeting, asking you to do something, you know, follow that prompting of the Holy Spirit. If you have any doubt about pray and ask somebody that you know who are godly and faithful to God, and they will give you the directions. So I, 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 I thought about this man of the house, and, and he had this urging to do something, and, and he went ahead and did it. So when the disciples came, they saw this large room upstairs prepared and furnished, as the Lord had commanded. Praise God. So their faith were exercised. They obeyed the command of Christ. And the question was answered, and they saw the reward of their faith. Praise God. This is always true when you and I follow God's commands. You know, this was their wow moment. And say, you know, some people say it was Peter and John that the Lord sent. And, and I can imagine the look on their face. As they started out, they might be wondering, you know, where we will see this man with a picture in a big city. And then they found him and said, wow, what Jesus said is so true. I can believe it. And then they kept following him, wondering, you know, where is he going to go? When is he turning to the house? And walking, walking, walking. Oh, I wish he will stand to a house somewhere. And when, they, when he turned to that house, and he found the master asking. And when they opened the door, they saw this big, pretty room prepared and furnished. And I could look at the faces of John and Peter, if it were them. So, wow. How great is our God. 
How awesome is he? He saw this room way back there. He saw it. He saw the man with the picture before even he started out to the world with the picture. He saw the room when the room was empty. Praise God. Now it is furnished and ready to go. You and I serve Almighty God. Praise God. To our eyes, the room may be empty. The street may be empty. But God has a plan and he's working out his plan in your life and in my life. Praise God. So let us be yielding to him. Willing to obey those instructions that he will give us. Praise God. I will give you some, some lessons very briefly and then we will close. Number one, lesson number one you know, I see the all-knowing Lord here. The, oh, he knows all, everything. Praise. He saw the man with the picture even before he started out his way to the well. He saw the finished and prepared room even when it was empty. He saw it. He saw Nathanael even under the fig tree. Praise God. He sees you and me wherever we are. We are never out of his sight. Lesson number two. Lesson number two. The Lord who rules the hearts and minds of man. You know, it was the Lord who sent a command to the master of this house. You go and make this room ready. So I see here how God can rule the hearts of people. You remember the scripture in Proverbs. that The, the heart of a king is like streams in the, in the, uh, before God. Remember that? You know, he can turn people, turn the hearts of the kings to accomplish his purposes. He used the heathen king to give, to, to give out the command that Jerusalem can be built. He can. Praise God. We know our God rules the hearts and minds of people. Praise God. So are you facing some trouble with some people? Are you? God can change that. He can work in there. He can send a command and, and people can change. So we see a Lord who, is, who knows all. We see a Lord who can change hearts and minds. Praise God. Perhaps our minds need to be changed. We need to be changed. And we can ask God, God, I, I'm not where I ought to be. Change me. Change me. Praise God. Number three. Number three. The obedience and subsequent satisfaction of the disciples. They found what they were looking for. Jesus wanted to build up their faith. He wanted for them to experience his greatness. Praise God. He wanted for them to experience his greatness. Number four, praise God. It is in the mundane things of life, we often see the amazing hand of our God at work. Praise God. Even in the normal duties of life, we see God revealing himself to us. You remember why Zachariah was going into the temple? As his custom was. As his habit. He went into the temple and on that day, on the ordinary routine day of his service, God comes to him. I'm always fascinated with the story of this woman who was bent. Remember reading that in the Gospels? But the Bible says that she was in the temple on the Sabbath day. So I would think that she, it was her custom. It was her habit to be in the house of God on the Lord's day. So she will come regularly. It became mundane to some people. Not interesting to some people. But she was faithful. But it was there she met the Lord and her healing. Praise God. It is in the Monday you do your things faithfully. And God will show up. Praise God. Do them faithfully though. Do them diligently. And number five, if you need direction for your life, God is the best source. If you need direction for your life, God is the best source. Let's bow, close our eyes and bow our heads in prayer. Praise God. Praise God.
Our Father, we are so thankful that we have your word with us, that we can read it and find out your plan for our life. Lord, help us to be willing to follow your instructions. Ask these disciples followed your instructions to find that house. And how glad they were, Lord, when they found it. Father, we pray that we will obey your instructions. And we will follow those instructions, Lord. That we will also find our home prepared, ready in the heavens for us. Help us to travel this journey faithfully. As we travel this journey, Lord, as you help us to exercise our faith, learn more things from you. Lord, may it build up our faith in you, increase our faith in you, that we may be faithful to you, Lord. Praise God. Lord God, the questions you ask us, the Spirit of God is striving with us. Help us to be true and honest in answering those questions. Father, you want us to prosper in our life. Your purpose is always good on us. So help us to be willing to listen to you, to obey you, Lord, and do whatever you command us so faithfully that we will receive the reward of our faith. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this time. We bless everyone here in this assembly. May your peace go with them this afternoon. Lord God, we thank you for the visitors. Thank you that they chose to be with us today. We ask you to bless them. Father, we thank you for the families who traveled to India and came back. Lord, with thankful heart, we praise you for giving them a safe trip. It is your mercy. Lord, we thank you for the three of our brothers and sisters who were baptized this last week. We thank you for their dedication and their determination. Lord, they followed your instructions, and we are thankful for that. Lord, we thank you for blessing our camp. Lord, we thank you for your protection we experienced as we were traveling and then coming back, and even during the camp. How good and faithful are you, Lord. Father, now we pray for our brothers and sisters, our children, our families, those who testified this morning of your goodness and your greatness. Bless them, Lord. Father, we remember Teja. We remember Mohan. We thank you for these brothers. We pray for total healing in their life. Father, we pray for those who are sick and we are praying for them. We ask you to heal them. Because we believe in a healing God. You are a mighty God. Send us home with your peace and with your blessing. Give us a glorious week to serve you and to follow your commands. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Please be patient for one more minute. I have a, something I need to give out. Praise God. Amen. In the last week, we had a couple of our people that uh, received, uh, that obeyed the Lord in water baptism. And we normally give out a certificate uh, of baptism, indicating to them and to us for a record that they were baptized. So today it is our privilege to give these uh, baptism certificates to uh, uh, Bhagya and uh, also uh, um, Sri Devi, praise God. Amen. Praise God. Would you please come? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. This certificate says that, uh, praise God, having received the Lord Jesus as Lord and Savior, and in obedience to his command, Sri Devi, uh, Kasakurti, uh, don't go. <laughs> <laughs> was baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, on the 29th day of July in the year of our Lord, 2018. Amen? Amen. That's wonderful. Beautiful. Praise God. Amen. God bless you, Sri Devi.
God bless you. And here we have the same things uh, said. Praise God. Bhagya Madanu. Amen. We, thank, we are thankful for this precious brother and precious sister. Praise God. And we pray God's best for them and their lives. Pray God bless you and your family. Praise God. Amen. Let's rejoice in the Lord what he has done. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Um, is uh, Paul and Salaja here? There you are. Praise God. Amen. You know, the other day we dedicated their precious child. Uh, we prayed for uh, uh, Sila and uh, we dedicated her to the Lord. And we also want to recognize this family. God bless you. And this says, upon the request of her loving parents who pledged before the Lord to submit this child to his will and to raise her according to God's word and commandments. Sila Grace Yarmati was dedicated to the Lord on the first day of July in the year of our Lord, 2018. Amen. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you. We are ready to dedicate babies. We are, we are ready to baptize people. Amen. We are ready to lead them to Christ as their Savior. Oh, I wish we need to have a certificate of salvation too, right? Yes. Praise God. So good to have Rega's parents here with us today. Praise God. God bless you. And, uh, and so thankful that you came. And your uncle and auntie also. Praise God. How long are they going to be here? Wow, good, good. And three weeks. Okay. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. Enjoy your time here, Minnesota. Before the cold weather sets in, Get out of here. <laughs> God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Who else? Oh, oh, Ranjit's parents are here. Please, would you please stand there? Amen. We are so thankful that you came. And Ranjit's sister is also here. I think they are here for a special reason. And uh, praise God. God bless you. So good to see you. God bless you. Anybody else? Amen. Amen. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made.